Which character looks the best with their top off, Link or Geralt? It's easily Geralt. Link looks like a boy. So if you're, if you're defending a boy, you're wrong. And this is Versus, the GameSpot show that pits your favourite games, consoles, franchises and hot button issues against each other. This week we're pitting two of the greatest open world adventures of the last couple of years against one another. It's The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt versus The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Fighting for The Witcher 3 is Dave Jewett, who plans to model himself after the White Wolf when he grows old and grey. And arguing the case for Zelda Breath of the Wild is Will Potter, who is such a massive Zelda fan that he failed his maths GCSEs because he was busy playing the Wind Waker instead of revising. And look where he is now, Mr. Hughes! Each are going to argue their corner for their game over the course of three randomly picked topics, the overall winner being decided by you, the wonderful viewers. Last week's fight between God of War and The Last of Us finally saw Oscar knock down a peg as his case for Naughty Dog's masterpiece lost out to me 75% of the votes for God of War. We're going to be throwing up a clickable poll right here on YouTube. Vote for who you think argued their case best by clicking on the I in the top right corner at any point during the video and casting your vote. If you're watching this on GameSpot.com, let us know who you think has won the debate in the comments section below. Right, let's get into it. Hi, Bill. Hello, Dave. I see you've bought a box of your death screams. Can I play this? It's the sound you're going to make when I smash your head in for this debate. I'm going to cut your head off and wear out my belt. Or I'm going to trap you inside this and bury it under Hyrule. Well, we're going to start this with open world. Which game is the best open world? Personally, I think the world of the Northern Realms of The Witcher 3 is the best. The absolute size of the lad is absolute <laughs> unit of a game world. You've got the the, the towns of, of all the all the cities of Novigrad, you go to Skellige, you've got the, the swamps, you've got war torn battlefields, you've got so much variety. You go to these really dense cities and while they are so like incredibly packed, you can walk down narrow alleys and the main streets and see something different every time. Moving between those also invites so much exploration. Like I made it a point in the early games of the in the early hours of The Witcher to not fast travel anywhere. Because every time I got on the back of Roach and went somewhere, there was always something new to find. The way that they built this world is that usually in, in open world games they make the world and then they fill it with quests. In The Witcher 3 they made the quests and then altered the world around it so that it never feels too dense or too loose or too open or, or too confining. There's been such thought into it. Don't get me wrong, I think The Witcher 3 is a beautiful world, but I think that not only is Breath of the Wild a better open world than The Witcher 3, I think it's maybe the best open world in any game ever. And the reason I say that is because Hyrule in Breath of the Wild feels like it's alive. It feels like it's living and breathing. It has an ecosystem. You see wildlife, you see remnants of this massive battle that ha happened a hundred years ago. And the physics at play in that world just make it feel like a playground. So you can run around, set fire to the grass, use that grass to lift yourself up. Um, and it's so, so incredible to just explore and wonder. And under every nook and cranny, you are rewarded with the Korok seeds, um, you, are, you are rewarded for being curious about the environment, seeing something on the horizon and thinking, yeah, I'm going to go over there, I'm going to set a marker, I'm going to see what there is. And it really rewards that curiosity. Witcher 3 has all that too. It just, it makes you work for it a little bit more, which I enjoy more because I find it much more rewarding. Like you say, it feels more alive. To me, an open world feels alive because of the people in it. And I feel like that was one of the, the the bits in Zelda that was missing out. Any town you went to, it was still pretty sparse. Whereas in The Witcher, there was hundreds of people and all these people come together and all this world comes together, all the buildings come together, all the landscapes come together to make, like I said, an absolute unit of a map. But isn't that a bit miserable? Just Breath of the Wild, yes, oh. it's tragic and yes, you need to save the world, but actually, it's just such a nice place to be. And I found The Witcher 3 so uninviting. Breath of the Wild, you can explore that world better than you can in The Witcher. You can climb anything, you can glide I'm so around. glad you brought up climbing because okay. The Witcher 3 originally had a climbing mechanic and they took it out because they wanted players to take their time in the world. But you, if you see a rock, you have to sort of walk around it and take half an hour Not rather than just being like, right, I'm going over. Even if I'm a Witcher, I'm wearing chainmail, I've got swords, I got bows and arrows and kit. So I'm does probably, Link. I'm probably too heavy. 
to climb. Link's got about 10 swords on his person at any one time. That are like sugar glass. He's even got nice climbing gear he can change into and just, you know, go up a bit quicker. The bandana from Guns N' Roses, you mean? Yeah, he looks awesome. Which game has the most satisfying combat? I think it's Zelda. It has so many layers that you can pick and choose what you like about combat in Zelda. First of all, you have a load of weapons. This game doesn't give you the best sword in the game until much, much later. So you're free to experiment with big swords, small swords, sticks. And that makes it so fun to experiment and try different things. And you're always constantly switching out on the fly. Uh, and then on top of that, you have the whole physics of the game. And that really opens up to dropping bombs, attaching bombs to other things and rolling them down hills to gliding and dropping and using like metal objects to drop big crates on top of monsters. Or you could wait until the monsters fall asleep and then sneak into their camp and kill them silently. You can approach it from so many different angles. I think it's so fun to just play with that and just it feels so fluid that I think Zelda has the best combat. I'm not going to deny that Zelda's combat is enjoyable but I don't feel like it's nearly as satisfying as The Witcher 3. Now, I know The Witcher 3's combat was quite tricky for some people, but overcoming that hurdle is the first, first breath of satisfaction that you get from that game. You have like the normal light attack, heavy attack stuff, you can create combos out of that, same as you know most RPG games, but its, it's depth and its breadth is, is so intense that you can fight in whatever ways you want. First of all, you have two swords and they're not made of bloody glass. <laughs> You've got your steel to get any, any organic uh, organisms, the normal monsters, the humans. Then you have the silver to get ghosts, enchanted monsters, anything magical out of the way. And that keeps you on your toes. You mentioned the tools at your disposal, like the bombs and stuff. The Witcher has his signs. So he has five signs that can also be um, customized to do extra things. So you can use Igni to set things on fire. You can customize that to like a constant flame storm. You've got ones to knock people over. You can use magic traps. And all of that is, it's all happening on the fly. I'm not gonna lie, I do agree. I think The Witcher 3 has fun combat. Uh, but what I found was that I just ended up getting into a, a routine with it. And you brought up the breakable weapons in Zelda. And that was a big complaint at the time about that game. But that plays so perfectly into the world and the story because you are surviving. The Witcher is about making what you do. A Witcher lives out in the wilderness. He, he's also a survivor. And the breakable weapons never felt like survival to me. It felt like frustration. Like, I can, I got a royal sword, a royal sword. Like, you'd imagine that was crafted by the finest blacksmiths in all of Hyrule. And it shatters when I shove it up a Bokoblin's ass. He's got a hard ass. <laughs> he's got a, he's, he can get his ass out of here. <laughs> okay, but look, the, the breakable weapons, yeah, it can be frustrating early on, but you do get over that. And it does become a thing where you are actively thinking about what you're using. And should I be using my weapons to do this? Or should I be thinking about more creative ways like rolling a boulder down a hill to kill the enemy instead of just hacking and slashing, which I think gets a bit tiring. I don't care for your, any of your boulder nonsense. I want to chop monsters' heads off. Well, you're um, not going to do it with a master sword, are you? No, because it's going to break no, instantly or run out of <laughs> batteries. Oh, put me back in a stone because I'm going to charge. <laughs> Shitty master sword. <laughs> which game has the best storytelling? I mean, you could put a gun to my head and I couldn't tell you what the Zelda story was beyond I woke up in a cave and Calamity Ganon is now the smoke monster from Lost. Witch of Three is still held in its well-deserved, lofty, first place position for storytelling. Some of the side quests in The Witcher 3 are better than the entire quests in some RPGs. I can't think of better quests. Like when people talk about amazing quests in games, things like the Bloody Baron always turn up. That's, that's like a benchmark for good quest writing in RPGs now. And it's got, it's got like the really deep stuff like that and the, uh, the Tower of Rats gameplay. Um, the, in, the, the, the create characters for like a two hour diversion. They, they realize that people might not even see them. And you've got all that depth and all that intensity and all that drama. Going into a Zelda game, you do know what you're gonna get story-wise. Ganon is the big baddie. Princess Zelda needs saving most likely, and you play as Link. But in Breath of the Wild, Link wakes up after being asleep for 100 years, and he doesn't really know what's going on. And you're encouraged to talk to people, to open your eyes and look at the landscape and, and see what's been happening over the last 100 years. 
And the, it's the environment that is telling you this story. And that's what's so brilliant about that game. It's because the story meshes so perfectly with the gameplay and the world. It's the perfect Triforce, if you will, of cave elements. <sighs> <laughs> And then there are flashbacks as well. So you do get pieces, fragments every now and again. So you're gradually building up this picture of the world that was 100 years ago. And then when you're ready for it, then you go on the epic final journey to defeat Ganon. And that is one of the greatest moments for me in gaming is deciding this is the time. This is the time to end this and to start a new chapter in Hyrule. And I'm going to go up to that castle, I'm going to knock on the front door, and I say, Oi, Ganon, you're going down. <laughs> but The Witcher 3 has, has all that and more, man. Like, I, I, I did really enjoy my time with Zelda, but I just can't, I, I can't, couldn't compare it. You're in, the, you're in this world of The Witcher 3, and you have to balance like political strife between the cities. There's a war going on. You have monsters at every outset. You're trying to help the, the common man while also trying to unite these kingdoms to save them from the wild hunt that's still at your back. All, all the meanwhile, Geralt's got his own internal demons of trying to find Ciri, who he loves like a daughter. And then when the game changes and you progress, you play as Ciri and you get to feel the chase of that wild hunt firsthand and get to see the world from a completely different point of view. If all the stories didn't earn their place in like the, the annals of like great video game shit, like the Bloody Baron stuff, the, the, even the Pan stuff, all these characters, if they didn't earn that, we wouldn't be talking about them today. But you go into The Witcher 3 and for a lot of people it was their first Witcher game. So why do you care about these people? Like you're told you have to save Ciri. Link and Zelda, there is legend, there is a hundred years of history and you see that and experience it. And I think that The Witcher, in its setting is interesting, but you don't get the, you know, the scale that this is having a grand impact on that world. I think it feels very much like Geralt cares about Ciri, and yes, there's a threat, but you don't really know who they are. You see them a few times and fight them, but they just don't feel like this huge force coming down on the world like Ganon is and his legion He's of not monsters. a force in the world, he's knocking about a castle. He's, he's letting you do your own thing. He's just, he's a wisp. He's a wisp in the wind. Meanwhile, the wild hunt is at your door. You've got politics to worry about. And there's a new cool piece of armor that you need to go and craft. This debate seems to be going off course, so we'll wrap it up there. But let us know who you think debated their case better by voting in our poll in the top right corner of the video, or if you're over on GameSpot.com, by putting your thoughts in the comment section below. It will be your votes that decide who wins, so make yourselves heard. Right, time for this week's quickfire round. A series of dumb, fun questions written by the rest of the UK team. Naturally, Dave and Will have no idea what's coming their way. Which character looks the best with their top off, Link or Geralt? It's easily Geralt. Link looks like a boy. So if you're, if you're defending a boy, you're wrong and basically. People are into boys. Geralt though, he's all messed up, isn't he? He's got... He's rugged! Yeah, but it's a bit... He's very... War-torn. Like, whereas it's a bonus. Link is just... You see him in his desert gear and it's just... It's a beautiful boy. Would you rather have sex on a unicorn or a bacoblin? <laughs> 100% a unicorn. I can imagine. It's been, it's been, it's tried and true. The unicorn's a lot softer. Yeah, but it's bacoblins, I imagine, are a bit greasy, so they you know, you've already got some lubrication going on. No, that's just... <laughs> <laughs> Who would win in a physical fight with swords and magic, Epona or Roach? <laughs> I think Roach would kick his ass. She's, she's the best horse. She can climb onto rooftops. Roach is a glitching hacker, so it's not a fair fight. Pona has a song. Does Roach have a song? Yeah, they're gonna play it at a funeral. What, Papa Roach? <laughs> <laughs> Do your best Link shout impression. Hiya! <laughs> that was actually quite good. I might. Yeah! <laughs> that was also very loud. <laughs> Out of Link or Geralt, which is the most Tory? I reckon Geralt. No, 100% not. Well, no, because Link is pure and good. He'd be definitely Lib Dem, Labour, maybe Green Party, whereas Geralt, he just does whatever what he wants. About? He kills monsters. And the yeah. biggest monsters in the world right now are the Conservatives. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to get your voices heard in our poll or in the comments section below and tell us who you think argued their case better. And if you enjoyed this episode of Versus, make sure to hit that subscribe button as we'll have new episodes of the show every Wednesday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.